Today we're going to do our chapter 12 review. So we'll work our way through this particular section. Good chance that this will end up being in two videos because I'm not sure I can get it in in the 20 minutes. But and we skipped section 12.1. We started with section 12.2 and we talked about excluded values. So let's say you've got a fraction. And I asked you, what's the excluded value of this fraction? Remember, the excluded value is whatever will make the denominator or the bottom number equal to zero, because I cannot have zero on the bottom of my fraction. So on this particular one, I find out that b cannot equal 8. So that's my excluded number. Um, let's do another one here. Say I have um, polynomials, not just binomials or monomials. And I say, what's the excluded value here? Well, I don't really care what the top is. If it doesn't tell me to simplify it, I don't have to do anything to the top. And if it says just find the excluded values, I'm looking to see what that bottom factors into. So it'd be k plus 1 and k plus 3. Then I would solve each one of those. So k um, equals negative 1 and k equals negative 3. Those are the two values that if I plugged into that bottom, it would make it undefined. So therefore, k cannot equal negative 1 and k cannot equal negative 3. That would be the two excluded values. I don't care on the top. Um, if they told me to simplify, then that's asking me for something different. Maybe they say simplify and find excluded values. So there's the excluded values. Now I'm going to continue on and I'm going to simplify here. That means I also have to factor the top. So I've got a k minus 1 and a k minus 1. Well, nothing cancels out, so that's as simple as I can get it. And, you know, I continue and go, here's it simplified, here's the excluded values. So, let's do another one. All right, I'm going to factor both of these because let's say they're telling me simplify and expre express the excluded value. I'm going to factor the 2 out of the top, which leaves me with b minus 7. And on the bottom, I have b, and I have b, and I have a negative 7 and a negative 2. Okay, now looking, excluded values, b cannot equal 7 and b cannot equal positive 2, because those are the two values that make the bottom 0 or undefined. But then I also see that I can cancel out. Now remember, the whole thing has to go. I can't just take the b out. The b minus 7 and the b minus 7 cancel each other out, leaving me on the top with 2 and on the bottom, b minus 2. So there's simplified, there's the excluded um, values. All right, try one. So you can pause the video and come back after you do the problem. So r squared plus r minus 6 on the top, and r squared plus 4r minus 12 on the bottom. Go ahead and work it out, and then come back. All right, on the top, I have r plus 3 and r minus 2. On the bottom, I'm going to have r plus 6 and r minus 2. Excluded values, x or r cannot equal negative 6 and r cannot equal positive 2. Okay, so there's my excluded values. Then I'm going to go ahead and cancel out what I can cancel out. Remember, the whole thing's got to go. I can't take this r here in knock it out without taking that whole thing. So I'm left with r plus 3 over r plus 6. The r minus 2, the whole thing goes and becomes 1. So the answer here is r plus 3 
over r plus 6 with those excluded values. Okay, um, moving on to section 12.3. This was when we began to multiply rational numbers, and at first we started with just monomials. If you want to, you can multiply straight across first, or you can um, reduce down. So you can reduce down before you multiply. So you have a squared and a squared. Um, you have a b squared and a b, so you have a b below. Sometimes it helps once you mark it out, if there's something left, to write it lower so your eyes pick up on it. So um, on the top, I'm left with 6a. And on the bottom, I'm left with b squared and b, or b cubed. All right, now you try one. All right, go ahead and try it and then come back. All right, your m and your m cancel each other out. Your n squared and your n leaves you with n on the top. Again, it might help to write it farther above it. Um, on your homework on this section, I remember some of you kind of skipping over some stuff, and so that whole n squared got knocked out, and you didn't leave the n on the top. So write it above it so you know you still have it. So you have 4n over 3, and that should be your final answer on that. Then we moved on to polynomials. Still multiplying. All right, again, I cannot emphasize enough that you can't individually pull these terms out because they are added or subtracted with something. So you must factor them to make sets of parentheses, and then the whole parenthesis would have to factor out. So x minus 16 becomes x plus 4 and x minus 4. On the bottom, I'm going to factor out a 2, so it is x plus 4 on the bottom. I have an x plus 4 over here that I can't do anything to. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have an x plus 4 times an x plus 4. That's everything factored. Then I can go back, and as long as I can cancel out the whole parenthesis, I can do it. So that and that go away. Now, understand when I say fact, uh, cancel out, it actually means that they're equal to 1. Okay, that and that go away. So what I'm left with is x minus 4 on the top and 2 times x plus 4 on the bottom. And they haven't asked me here what my excluded values are, so all I'm doing is simplifying these and multiplying them. All right, now you try one. Pause the video, do it, and then come back. All right, top you're going to factor out a 3, so I have y minus 3. The bottom is going to be y uh, minus 4 and y minus 5. Over here, the top is going to be y minus 4 and y minus 4, and your bottom is y minus 3. All right, now I can cancel out the entire set. So I'm left with 3 times y minus 4 over y minus 5. All right, so let's go on. Now, this was the harder part. This was dimensional analysis. Um, you're not going to have much on your test on this. But you do need to be aware of how to do it. Let's say um, I have 450 gallons that I'm going to use up in one hour. And I want to change those to ounces per second. So I start out like this. I have 450 
gallons over one hour. Well, before I get to the end, I want to change the hours to seconds, and I want to change the gallons to ounces. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is first change the gallons to cups. So I have one gallon is equal to 16 cups. And then I want to change my cups to ounces. So one cup is equal to eight ounces. Now look what happens. The gallon and the gallon go away. The cup and the cup goes away. So I'm left with ounces, which is what I want. Then I have hours to change to seconds. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Now, I would take a calculator here. I'll let you use a calculator on this. And multiply 450 times 16 times 8. Get an answer for that. And then on the bottom, you're going to take 60 times 60, or 3,600, and you're going to divide that into the top. And it's going to end up giving you 16 ounces per second. Okay? You might have some of those on your homework to do. All right. Section 12.4, dividing rational expressions. You remember on these, all the real differences, you have to remember to invert and multiply. So I have x squared minus 5x plus 6 divided by, or 5 divided by x minus 3 over 15. It's just like you just did, except for remember you take the second fraction and you multiply. So I have x, um, I'm going to factor this at the same time too, x minus 3 and x minus 2 over 5. I bring this part down. Now I'm going to flip that. So 15 goes on the top, x minus 3 goes on the bottom. The x minus 3 goes away. Um, the 15 over 5 reduces to 3 over 1. So I have 3 times x minus 2 over 1 or just 3 times x minus 2. I'm going to make sure it's still recording. Hold on. Okay, we're still good for a few more minutes. Um, all right, you try one of these. Go ahead and work that out, pause the video, and come back to it. All right, I'm going to factor that. Factors into n minus 8 and n minus 1. That's what that factors into. On the bottom, don't forget to factor out the 9. I'm going to flip here, so the 27 goes on the top. The n plus 8 goes on the bottom. The only thing that I can cancel out completely, I can cancel those out. They go away. And then 27 over 9 reduces to 3 over 1. So I'm left with 3 times n minus 8 over n plus 8. All right, we're going to do some more dividing work. This time we're going to divide by a monomial, and they'll have it written out horizontally first. All right, let's say you have that. Well, you're dividing by a monomial, so you know you can rewrite it like this. That x is distributed with each one of these, because that's the common denominator. So I can rewrite it like this. x cubed over x is going to leave me with x squared. x over x leaves me just with a 2. And this, actually, it was x over x, which is going to leave me with a 1. So I've got x squared plus 2 minus 1. And that's what that's equal to. All right, you try one. Right, remember it's over a monomial, so just go ahead and put that common denominator with each one of them, and then come back. All right, so I have 2x cubed 
over 2x plus 12x squared over 2x minus 8x over 2x. The 2 and the 2, the x cubed and the x, leaving with an x squared. 12 over 2 reduces to 6 over 1. x squared over x gives me an x. Um, the x's go away there, and then I have 4 over 1. So I'm left with x squared plus 6x minus 4, and that should be your answer there. All right, let's move on to some work with monomials changing to binomials on the bottom. So I no longer just have one term on the bottom. So let's say I've got 6r squared minus 5r minus 56 over 3r plus 8. Well, I know I'm going to have to factor the top. I factored into 3r plus 8 and 2r minus 7 over 3r plus 8. Those two go away, and I'm left with 2r minus 7. All right, you try one. Do that and then come back. All right, that factors into 5w plus 6 times 4w plus 3 over my 5w plus 6. These are equal to 1, so I'm left with 4w plus 3 as my answer. All right, then we went on and did some long division. Let's say I have x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x plus 1 divided by x minus 2. Well, I can't factor that top. So when I can't factor the top and I have at least a trinomial, I know I'm going to try long division on it. So I'm going to do x minus 2 into x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x plus 1. Now remember this long division is much easier than what we think of with long division. I have a cubed, a 2, a 1, and a 0. So make sure that I have the progression down of my exponents. If not, I have to put a place value in there. x times what gives me x cubed? I'll need an x squared. So that gives me x cubed minus 2x squared. Those first two must match up or you've done something wrong. Then I have 6x squared minus a negative 2x squared. So that becomes 6x squared plus 2x. So I have 8x squared. I bring down my 3x. I need to multiply that x times an 8. Now I'm going to put plus in between those. An 8 and an x, which is going to give me 8x squared minus 16x. Again, I'm subtracting which makes this a positive, so that becomes a 19x. I bring down the plus 1. I need to add the 19 there. So 19 times x is 19x minus 38, which gives me a remainder of 39. So I take the 39 and I place it over the x minus 2. This right here is going to be your answer. All right, you try one. Remember, if the exponents don't make their way down, you've got to put a placeholder there. This one does, though. All right, divide that out, and then come back to the video. Two d times what gives me six d cubed. I'm going to need a three d. Squared. So that times that gives me 6d cubed plus 9d squared. When I subtract, I'm going to get a negative 8d squared. I bring down the negative 2d. 
I'm going to have to multiply by negative 4d 